Dulog, 12 minute session to speakers over there. For having the session, we have Ruchi Baba. She's the head of analytics at uh, Bernard Record. She manages the sales and revenues part of analytics over there. And we have Som Sigdar, uh, Shom, as he's fondly known, the head of data science for Anchor together as a part of the dialogue, they will talk about generative AI in retail and CPG. Over to you, Ruchi and So. Sure. Thank you, Samir and Bhaskar. Uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, at 3AI uh, in the GenAI conference uh, hosted by yourselves. Um, hi, Ruchi. Uh, I hope Hi. all's Hi. good. All, all good. Yeah. Thank you. So as, as uh, Samir and Bhaskar uh, explained, so what we'll do today is uh, we'll talk a little bit about what are the impacts of uh, JNEI, the Generative Artificial Intelligence, as, as it's known as in the retail and CPG industries. Um, so it is actually revolutionizing the way we shop, enhancing the customer experiences and driving a lot of innovation in this entire area. Right. Uh, Let's let's dive into this topic, Ruchi. And before we do that, I think it's actually uh, better to talk a little bit about uh, the evolution of Gen AI, right? Because there's so much of talk across the entire data science and tech uh, tech experts. What do you see? What do you say? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is the big, uh, I would say, a disruption as well as an enabler, uh, which is going to really accelerate. Um, the way uh, companies, uh, you know, do business, interact with customers, you know, their, their multifaceted impact, uh, and uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see, you know, a combined knowledge of what's coming up uh, in this space. Yeah. True. True. So, as Ruji mentioned, right? So before we start, we let's let's look at the evolution of the JNAI space. So it's been there for years now, uh, through hidden markups. Uh, Gaussian mixture models, different deep learning models like RNNs, etc. Uh, we are hearing a lot about it now because uh, a lot of us have likely heard of heard of OpenAI's uh, ChatGPT, uh, which has become an overnight sensation post December 2022 and sparked a digital race to build and um, uh, uh, release the computers. Right. Uh, so ChatGPT is only one consumer friendly example of Gen AI, uh, which is a technology comprising of uh, algorithms that can be used to create new contents like uh, videos, images, uh, text, quotes, uh, simulations and all of that. Uh, so there are multiple other such examples like uh, DALI2, uh, GPT 3.5 and so on. Uh, but why? But today here we are here to actually talk about how does generative AI is going to impact uh, in the retail and CPG areas? Uh, before we start, uh, a recent McKinsey analysis in the shows that in the next five years, uh, generative AI could add up to $275 billion uh, to the April fashion and luxury sectors operating profits. And that's the amount of space or size of the pie that we're talking about. Uh, wow. While there are multiple that, areas- That's going to be a game changer, so. <laughs> Uh, completely. So while there are multiple ways in which Gen AI can transform the retail landscape, uh, but given the time constraint today, we'll focus on three areas, which are on customer experiences, product design, and content creation. And okay. with that, I would actually like to understand from Ruchi that what do you think are some of the areas that can transform through Gen AI on the customer experiences front? Yeah. So, so like like you mentioned that it's it's a big disruption and an enabler right that's coming up and uh, the immediate use and customer experiences the way we are um, doing customer service right be it uh, you know answering the queries uh, looking at information looking at the sentiments of the queries all of this can be really revolutionized by the uh, gen ai uh, you know uh, ecosystem uh, another stage to that is going to be Gen AI becoming co-pilots, right, for, for the customer support uh, teams. So the way the operating model happens now is going to completely change, right? So even recommendations are going to be hyper-personalized. Uh, I don't know whether you saw there was a, a very big uh, company which actually uh, targeted 500 stores, uh, very hyper-personalized stores using uh, Gen, uh, Gen AI capability, right? So those are the kind of changes that are going to happen, which means that the customer will be able to look at things uh, in the merchandise in a very, very uh, tech savvy way, which means 3D merchandising portfolios, right? 
a highly immersive way of engaging with uh, new product launches. All of this is going to become extremely important and extremely relevant uh, and targeted right, to the specific cohort of the customer. So I think all of that is becoming uh, a very big change uh, as this dis disruption comes in. Uh, I'll also call about, uh, you know, uh, uh, generative AI becoming a very good enabler in terms of supply chain and uh, inventory forecasting, right? Now, imagine if out of stock is happening, but you have Gen AI coming in now and do doing the right demand forecasting, and the customer gets the delight of finding the product uh, on shelf. That itself is going to be a, uh, you know, game changer uh, in terms of customer service. So I think two, three things, uh, the way we support customers, the way we... Uh, introduce new products to the customers and merchandise to the customers. And number three, the way we target the customers with hyper-personalization is going to be the big, you know, three big themes that come in uh, customer experience. Uh, what do you think, you know, what do you like to add about content and media? There's so much happening on that front. Why don't you just share your experience uh, on that front? I, I completely agree with when you talked about the customer experiences part and, and I think the product uh, design and the content actually goes very hand in hand uh, with that customer experience and you know uh, it actually opens up endless possibilities for innovative product designs and what I mean by that is um, it can actually leverage vast amounts of customer feedback, uh, market research and historical data uh, and the AI models can actually generate unique and personalized designs that capture the essence of individuality. So for example let's say I'm wearing this shirt and it has this blue color and these designs which goes horizontally and probably certain colors of the buttons and if we actually think about a new fabric uh, a new new design of a color or new pattern and new design it can create endless simulations out of this and give us everything in a matter of a few minutes to few hours depending on how much you actually want to get into that so what it's going to uh, do is basically create a very unique competitive advantage for all the designers in this space mm -hmm. and and they will not only rely on uh, the latest trend reports and market analysis but they will also look into these various uh, design system it is it is actually it is very interesting that it's uh, actually something that has been already uh, tested out and it's a reality right now a group of Hong Kong based um, fashion designers from the laboratory for artificial intelligence in design, it's called it lab, held a fashion show, which featuring only generative AI supported designs, right? So that's wow. where the stage we have reached. And yes, uh, it's going to revolutionize the product design, not only from the different types of design, but also from reducing the lead time of creating those mm -hmm. designs and making it more operationally viable and efficient. Interesting. And, you know, I was also reading somewhere that uh, in the space of marketing itself, I think within the next couple of years, 30% of marketing campaigns are going to be driven by uh, generative AI. So that's the game. Uh, that's a change that we're going to see, uh, you know, and some one of my erstwhile companies actually they've gotten into a, a, a kind of a, like a in customer engagement program where they're asking the consumers to design artwork bases uh, uh, gen ai so that's a level of engagement that's uh, that's going to elevate right um, and take it to the next level but having said that i think there are some challenges uh, which this um, disruption and this technology will bring bring along and why don't you throw some light on those challenges what do you see you know um, coming up in that space i I definitely do think that there are a few challenges that's going to come. But before that, I would also like to add one one particular side on the content piece because that's mm -hmm. something that you also connected on the customer bit, right? So, what I think is that you know, um, for the in in the realm of content creation and marketing, uh, the mm -hmm. GenAI optimizes efficiency and effectiveness as well. So, uh, right. it actually has access to vast data sets. And I'll give you an example of how content or product description can be actually. Uh, powered through Gen AI. So let's say uh, you go on to purchase a, an apparel or, or anything from uh, from the e-commerce website, right? What you do is basically look into the product descriptions when you are on the product display page. Uh, generally, a study shows that a high quality product description leads to a significantly higher conversion rate and, and it actually leads to higher revenues eventually. So now imagine if you are presented with a personalized product description that you would like to hear about and that resonates with your own customer segment type it actually will enhance your entire customer 
experience and provide a much better chance of conversion for yourself and thereby it actually leads to a completely different uh, era of revenue generation uh, having said that uh, as you rightly pointed out are there any challenges i do think that there are two or three challenges that comes in and one is um, we should be very um, aware about the privacy and security which is very important because as we handle vast amounts of sensitive customer information uh, we need to understand that what is PII, what can be shared, what cannot be shared, and things like that. Uh, the the one of the things that I really think is that now the this particular technology is accessible not only to data scientists or tech enthusiasts, mm -hmm. it's actually it's actually uh, available to everybody, and that's why we need to be very much cognizant about how do we use this particular data. Uh, on product design, I really wanted to add one point because I wanted to know your thoughts around the customer preferences and experiences point of view. But one product design, one one unique point is around the legal content, right? So because the AI is now designing the products, so how do we determine who owns the intellectual property, the IPs and all of that, right? And creative rights to those AI generated works. So I think there's a strong legal precedent that needs to be set at a case by case basis as well. But how, what do you think will lead on to those challenges as well? Yeah, so I think it's still evolving this uh, angle of um, uh, proprietary intelligence, uh, legal aspects. I think uh, companies are figuring it out, right? So we don't have the answers right now. But I think there will be some regulations required at a later stage, right? To handle all of these legal uh, uh, you know, angles uh, of this entire disruption. Uh, having said that, I think the good part is let the companies experiment and flourish with this concept. I think there should be, um, and you would have heard, you know, uh, the the uh, you would have heard all, so uh, you would have heard the open AI leader, right, talking about, uh, you know, how the smaller companies should be allowed to flourish, and the uh, larger companies should be regulated, right. So this is an innovative space, right, and should not be stopped uh, or disrupted. And regulation should come at a little later uh, point in time. So that's what I feel. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, interesting. We have an age uh, where legal should come immediately into this space because companies are still understanding this uh, area. I think I think what you are what you what you are referring to is a normalization scenario of where the smaller yeah. companies can catch up to the larger companies yeah. in terms yeah. of the tech stack. And that's very interesting. Yes. yes. Along with the, the legal aspect, right, uh, and the customer consumer privacy. I think the accuracy of data itself is a very big challenge right now, right? Because the gen generative AI model's fluency uh, depends on a large amount of data, right? That that the models are trained on. So anytime the data is not structured, not correct, unconstrained, it can lead to accuracy issues. So I think the organizations are still understanding that area. The data quality is going to be extremely important. Uh, for the accuracy and the right uh, impact of this technology. Uh, and last and not the least, I would say that we should treat generative AI as not your boss, but your intern, right? So we train the model, we tell what generative AI should do for us. Uh, so this entire anxiety around this technology should also ease out um, and, and utilize it as an add-on to your existing uh, skills. Um, so I think that's another challenge that I see in the minds of youngsters and people into the space um, uh, that it has to be seen as an add-on. It has to be seen, seen as a co-pilot um, for you to drive business. Excellent. I, I love that idea of seeing it as an intern and guiding it towards our own destination. So yeah, great, great thoughts, Ruchi. I love it. Thank you. And Thank you. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, so I think we are good and uh, we'll hand it over to Samir and uh, Bhaskar. Okay, thank you, Samir and Bhaskar. Thank you, Ruchi, and thank you, Shom. Uh, uh, Bhaskar, one point, stockouts, TPO, merchandising, supply chain, and retail CPG industry is anywhere very, fairly rather evolved in terms of the usage of analytics AI. Where do you see that going with the advent of GAI? I think that's a great uh, question, Samir. As, as, I, as I think about uh, these different aspects of uh, what is happening in the background for both retail and CPG, I think this is one area where Gen AI is actually going to play a huge part. Uh, it is going to help us create more optimized uh, solutions and networks 
that can drive value and benefits to everybody uh, in in the in the value chain that's that's one second uh, I, I think i'll pick on the point that ruchi was talking about where uh, most systems that will get created will be autopilots so wherever the human is involved in these processes with gen ai copilots coming in it is going to make the whole process more efficient uh, in those specific places where it gets applied but third uh, it also I, I also want to emphasize the point on data quality because the quality of data will determine how much efficient it can get and and maybe a quote that i'll put in here which i had heard some time ago transformative techno technologies like gen ai when applied to an efficient process magnifies the impact when applied to an inefficient process magnifies the inefficiency and can destroy companies if not done the right way so it's important it to be judicious almost a, like a nuclear fission absolutely i mean the possibilities of thing going right is great but god forbid if something goes wrong then the, it's a catastrophe in the making kind of a thing so you're absolutely right in terms of uh, really that uh, the extremes one can have if things go right and if things don't go right uh, thank you ruchi and thank you shomi thank you baskar for a great uh, set of takes